Happy Monday morning, everybody. I've got a little assist from a tripod because I need my hands today. Um, so we're going to journey a little bit um, from something that uh, struck me from the, that sermon that Pastor Los preached this weekend, which is a great one. So if you haven't looked at uh, or watched the services from this weekend yet, I encourage you to do so. Beautiful music from the cantata and also just a fantastic sermon um, from Isaiah. Uh, so the uh, text for the sermon was this. Uh, and it goes, Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9 was the full text, but we're going to focus in um, starting at verse 6 through 9. And so that is where we're going to go um, today. I'm going to read that to start off with um, as we think about this. Uh, so starting at verse 6 in Isaiah 64. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Get that picture. Our, our righteous acts are just filthy rags. and We dried up like a shriveled leaf. And we know what that looks like in Minnesota, the crisp. And you crunch a dried up leaf and it just almost disintegrates into nothing. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. We're talking about that. How many of us feel like our sins have just swept us away? How many of us feel that way? No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. And this is Isaiah. This is in the Old Testament when what was happening there, definitely um, this was what was going on as, as God hid his face. But that was not the way he was going to interact with his people forever. And that is not the way he has chosen to interact with us. We're going to talk about that too. Yet, O oh Lord... You are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Going from sins being swept, sweeping us away to asking God to look upon us, which is amazing. We think about if you're feeling sinful and dirty and unclean, why would you want God to look upon you? Isaiah writing here, that's a powerful statement of trust in the midst of um, feeling unclean and unworthy, where he's unclean, unworthy, um, but he trusts the potter to put him, the clay, in his hands and not destroy him, but to look on him and form him into something better. Right. We talked about this in the children's message. It was a, the, the, the sermon was on this. And what I want to bring up is uh, we're going to connect the sermon a little bit of you Sunday school. I got to teach t this uh, today, too, um, recording this on Sunday, as you probably noticed. Um, uh, Pastor Los in the sermon grabbed some clay, six colors of clay right here. And he started mashing them together and, and doing the sermon. And I don't want to ruin um, what his sermon was uh, speaking about. Uh, but at the end of the sermon, with a, with a uh, clever little smile, a sly little smile, um, he took this lump of clay, this long lump of clay, and kind of tossed it to me. I was sitting right next to the, the chancel area in the chapel, and I caught it, and I looked at it, and as a dad and a father of boys especially, but no, I don't want to leave the girls out because I, young, young ladies can do, think about this stuff and laugh too, but it, it brought to mind bathroom humor because when we put all of these colors together and he was smashing them together and blending those colors, do you know what kind of color comes out of that? It was kind of brown and uh, it was kind of in a long lump and so it kind of reminded us of bathroom humor, it kind of made us laugh a little bit in service. As I thought about his sermon, a little bit about the bathroom humor, but more about the color of that lump and some of the things he did, it brought to mind this. What's this? Everybody knows that, right? All of you guys? It's a cross, and what color is it? That brown, that grayish brown that comes from all of these colors. All of these colors taken in together um, kind of make up that color of the cross, doesn't it? Okay, and so we're gonna do a little exercise today and um, how we want to think about this is there's a lot of things that are trying to form us in life. And if you're watching this, I want to be very candid with you guys. If you're going around thinking that things are not trying to form you, things like 
news, social media, music, TV shows, games, um, money, friends, family, your own passions. If you think all of that is just neutral and you're just living your life without, and no one's trying to form you and you get to make your own decisions without any people trying to influence you, you need to wake up. <laughs> That's all I gotta say is, of course, everything around you is trying to form you and influence you. And if you haven't paid attention to that, start paying attention to that. Um, it changed my life back when I was in high school and I started paying attention to that, realizing just how many things in my life were trying to influence who I was and make me who they think I should be and draw me away from what God was calling me to be. So I want you on a piece of paper to write down the names of these colors here. If you can see them, um, you can pause me and get your, go find a piece of paper and pencil. And I want you to write like blue space, green space, yellow space, red space, purple, pink. I want you to put those on a page and I want you to label and claim what is trying to influence you. Some of them may be great, like your family may be great. Maybe that's green, your family. I don't know. It could be any color, whatever you want to try. And overall, they're great influences. But maybe your family is not a good influence and they're trying to form you in a negative way. Maybe there's an addiction in here that's trying to um, uh, form you and you need to write that out, whether you just write addiction or specifically call it out for what it is. Um, social media, like we talked about, there's work, there's a ton of things that are trying to form you. Pick six of them, put them on your page. Pause me right now and do it. Hopefully you did it. You pause just long enough to get that on the paper. And uh, what I'm going to do, hopefully really quick here, because I usually go long um, on these, but I try not to go too long. I'm putting my colors right on this whiteboard that I have here. All right, hopefully they all stay up. So on one side, we have our colors. On the other side, we have the cross. And daily, um, God is, is working with us. And this morning in my devotional time, just again, I'm reminded about, I'm in awe of how God takes me, of all people, sinful, unhelpful dude, and he still uses me. And he's using you guys because he chooses to use you guys. And he knows what's part of your life, what's trying to influence you and what you let influence you. Sin is one of these things. It's not you. You are not sin, but sin is one of those things that tries to influence you. It's got, it wants its hooks in you. It wants to pull you the way it wants to go. Um, sin is one of these things. And we know from Christ that he died on the cross for that sin. He died on the cross for you to pull you and make you new and take you through the cross into victory. That's already happened. That happened a long time ago, and that is your victory right now. It is a victory you don't have to wait for, work for, or hope for. It is your victory today, no strings attached. Jesus Christ died on the cross to save you from your sins. This is what kind of brought me into Sunday school today, which was a discussion with these kids that was just kind of enlightening for me in a way to think about it um, again in a new but same way, right? The Christian life is journeying from all these things that are pulling us in different directions and trying to get our attention and fighting to be our idol and moving us across to help us focus on the cross and believe what's already happened for us. These things want to capture our attention all the time. Our journey as Christians is to reduce our focus on them and focus on the cross and the victory beyond, which has already happened. So as you label these things day by day, how is God moving you away from them, mushing them together, refining them, forming them. I'll tell you, it takes a lot of kneading and working to get that perfect brownish color. Only God brought us the cross, right? How is he mushing that together, taking out the stuff that's not you, and moving you closer to believing and receiving his gift that is already yours? And the only problem is we have a hard time believing it. It's not that we, we can't work hard enough to earn it. We can't work at all to earn it. 
we just have a hard time believing it. How is he moving you away from all these influences and passions in your life and grow, drawing you closer to him and his cross? Where all of that stuff is still in there, but it's in this wonderful, glorious, God-pleasing, um, strengthening way that moves us beyond to victory that's already ours, that you already have. He is the potter, we are the clay. We're made of so many different things, and he knows it and he loves us. How is he forming you closer and closer to the cross and the victory beyond? Think and pray on that this week as we close out the Advent journey and quickly approach um, Christmas. How is he preparing you by pulling all that together um, and drawing you closer to his son and moving you to the victory that you have already? So that when the day he returns, um, he's going to only see what Jesus has done for you. And my prayer is that you finally see what Jesus has already done for you too. So on that day, you're not wondering what, if you're going to make it, but you know it. But you know it. You have it. Well, um, I pray you do this example. I hope it makes sense. I hope it was clear enough. Maybe it's more in my mind, but I hope it was helpful for you. As we journey this life, not trying to earn salvation or ask God for salvation, it's already there. How do we just believe it more and more each day and live it out in our lives as thankful, redeemed sinners? Um, so if we close down together in prayer as we start this week, um, in the hands of the potter, those big, strong, safe hands that can bring us together and is constantly forming us day in and day out in the way that we need to be formed, not the way we always want to be formed. So let's pray. Dear Jesus Christ, you are our potter. Help us to be your clay. Help us to be passive in your hands and active in your sending. Help us to believe more and more each day that you have loved us so much that you died and rose and forgive our sins and that is already paid for, done, sealed, signed, delivered, and for certain, no doubts, no strings. Lord, help us believe it day and day. Grow closer to you knowing that you love us unconditionally and that you've saved us. Lord, in this Advent season, as we journey to the manger and celebrate your birth, um, we are so thankful that you have changed um, your covenant and made a new covenant with us through Jesus Christ. And, and that in that new covenant, um, with uh, a sure and certain promise forever, um, that we can always be growing closer to you in your care. Grow us together with you, Lord, in the hope, the peace, the joy, and the promise of the future. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you clay blobs, you pieces of clay, you're in the potter's hands. He loves you dearly. And um, every day this week, I pray that you, you understand more and more deeply just how much um, that you have already got in Christ and how amazing he is and how he's just caring for you each day. Have a great week. God is with you. You are in the hands of the potter. Blessings.